guys, this is Rob with AIM. Just wanted to uh, go over the first concept that we discussed in the Swimming 101 series, and this is uh, to illustrate the law of hydrodynamics. We're going to show you a couple drills here, but the first thing we want to do is illustrate the difference between being short in the water versus being tall in the water, and just want to illustrate that first and foremost, so check this out. I'm just going to push off the wall with the hands by my side, and you're going to see how far I, I travel, and we're going to come back with the hands over the head, and we're going to see how far we travel, so check this out. see right here we're in relationship to where the, the pole is at to get out of the water. Now we're going to show you what happens when you get nice and tall in the water. I'm going to push off at the same intensity. The only difference is I'm just going to be as tall as I possibly can. I'm going to see if I get any further this time. As you can see, I don't know if the video will illustrate it or not, but you can see that you end up picking up about a full body length right off the top. Irregardless of how tall you are, as a rule of thumb, the taller you are in the water, the further you're going to go. And remember what we talked about with the 101 series. Our goal is, is how far can you travel in between strokes? We don't want to get preoccupied with moving really, really fast. We're more interested in carrying the distance in between strokes. That's what's going to make open water swimming a lot easier for you. We're going to show you a second drill that we're going to do that takes the law of hydrodynamics and it starts to help you understand what does it take for you to get tall in the water, okay? Um, you may have seen one of our other videos where we talk about uh, catch-up drill. Now you're going to see how catch-up drill becomes relevant to the law of hydrodynamics. I suggest that you use your pool buoy for this. That way you don't have to worry about pressing your chest down. What you want to do is just get the pool buoy up in between your legs here. And what I'm going to do is a drill called catch-up. And I'm only going to ask you to breathe on the side that you're comfortable with, okay? So for video purposes, I'm going to breathe on the right side going down so I can face the video. I'll also breathe on the left side coming back. But the point is, is I want you to understand that by doing catch-up drill, you're focusing on doing exactly what we showed you. How tall can you stay in the water? That's your number one goal. So this drill is all designed towards that. We're doing the pool buoy. It, it, it breaks the your concerns about what's happening with your legs. All right? I want you to pay attention to how slow I'm pulling through. It's not a matter of just trying to rip down the lane. It's about you trying to turn on a neuromuscular pathway for swimming tall. So take a look at this. you to do, even if you have to rewind this video and watch it over again. First of all, you'll notice that I'm not rushing the pull through and the recovery, all right? What I want you to understand is if you've got an arm out in front of you, you've always got something to lay on to. If you want to challenge this theory, swim your regular freestyle, count how many strokes it takes for you to go one length, then come back with the uh, pull buoy, and with one arm, just count how many strokes it takes for you to get down there. 99% of the time you're going to have a, a, a smaller stroke count just by having your arm out in front. Again, it goes back to the theory that you're covering more distance with every stroke. What a lot of people worry about is they worry about the recovery arm, trying to rush the next stroke. If you focus more on what's going on under the water, it's going to give you a bigger return on your investment of energy right off the bat. So I want you to pay attention to that catch-up drill. Again, if you have to rewind it and go back, okay? Two techniques that you need to look for. Notice that when my arm is out, that I rotate through and I face forward. I don't want you just laying on your side and doing a single arm pull through. I want you to get into full body position with rotation, pull through. Okay, so remember, you're trying to teach yourself to stay tall, but you also want to make sure that you start that biomechanical position in, in the correct position right off the bat, all right? Um, 
One of the things that you can do to um, add a, a little bit of a variance to that is I want you to take the catch-up drill as you get more comfortable with it, and I want you to force yourself to breathe on your non-comfortable side. Okay? So, for example, if you always breathe, especially in an open water setting, on the right-hand side, I want you to use the catch-up drill to work on your left side. If you're using the pool buoy, it's automatically going to correct you in the water. Turn on the neuromuscular pathways with your lats and your back. That's what a catch-up drill really does, is it'll build the strength in your back. Those are the muscles we want to use in swimming, not your biceps. Okay? So that's a second phase after you've watched these videos. You can go back and improve your swimming by focusing on the stroke that the side that you're not comfortable with. Again, it's not how fast you get these done, it's a matter of doing them properly. Remember, your fitness is a byproduct of working on technique over and over and over again. Okay? This is uh, this next drill you guys can do. It's um, it's kind of a fun. It's a different type of a drill. Um, there's three, four parts to it. Okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start from the middle of the pool. You're gonna swim up to just using your normal freestyle. Implement a flip turn. If you haven't learned how to do a flip turn, look at our videos on that. You'll notice that I'm gonna push off the wall as streamlined as I can, and then I'm gonna kick the rest of the distance to the middle of the pool. What you're doing is you're bringing in all the drills together. I'm working on trying to stay tall when I swim freestyle. I'm trying to turn on the neuromuscular pathway of staying tall when I push off the wall. And I want to try to incorporate the kicking from the hips, okay? Um, this is something that you can do six, eight, ten times. Give yourself about ten seconds rest after each one. So let me show you what it looks like. You're just going to simply start from the middle of the pool. Swim normal freestyle, flip, glide off. Ideally, try to get at least five to seven yards off the edge of the pool. Usually, there's lane lines, uh, flags above. Make sure you don't take your first breath before then, and then go right into a kick. All right, check this out. start kicking until you feel your hips break the surface of the water, you should feel your shoulder blades up on the top of the water, okay? If you don't get that balance established first, the kicking is going, it's going to be very slow and it's going to be very difficult for you, okay? Not to kind of digress for a second, but one of the things that you have to understand when we talk about hydrodynamics is the whole pencil drill, okay? The pencil drill is what we're going to talk about in video number two, and that's about body balance. All right, so give these drills a try. Hopefully you'll take the time to slow down, internalize what they feel like, and it'll move your swimming to the next level. So thanks for watching.